Today I have three spring thrift flips. Keep watching. We're going to start off with a little bit of jute. Glue gun, of course, and the glue sticks. I have a stem here of eucalyptus. I have some fix all adhesive. One of a three pack of metal signs from Dollar Tree. And this thrifted sign that I got at Goodwill. So to start off, I'm gonna decide where I wanna put this metal sign and it fits better on the arrow than it does on the plaque because it overhangs a little bit. So I'm just going to fix it down here. I'm gonna use a little bit of this Fix All from Dollar Tree because it's gonna give it longevity. It's gonna hold for a long time. I also have some of these little adhesive um, foam squares to use in just a moment. And then I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue. Work really quickly when you use hot glue on metal because it'll set up and it won't stick. If you take too long, it cools on that metal. So it doesn't have any support in the middle. And I'm going to use this little foam adhesive square to put it there. You can get, these are some that I got, I think at dirt cheap, but I've had them a long time. But you can get these just about anywhere. I'm pretty sure you can get little foam sticker pieces at Dollar Tree as well. I'm just going to put it under there where it can't be seen under the thick part of that O and press it down. Be sure you pick off any of your hot glue that seeps out so it's nice and clean. Then I'm going to take a couple of pieces of this eucalyptus stem, but first apparently I'm going to make the boat. So I'm going to take this jute cord and leave a little bit of a tail and then wrap it about 14 times around my hand. I'm going to pull it off my hand, securing it so it doesn't unwind. Press it together in the center and this is going to become our bow. So I'm going to tie it off in a few tight knots right in the center. This makes such a cute little floral type bow. I really like it. It's the first time I've done one this thick, but I thought it was, I thought it would look good with this. And this little sign is going to fit nicely into a neutral farmhouse or rustic decor. So I've just taken these loops, I've made some 12 inch loops, I'm cutting the ends, I'm going to fold them in half, right in the center, and then the excess string that I have above, I'm going to use to secure that to the back of what is going to be our bow. Just be sure when you get ready to hot glue it down that you remember that this is the back. Doing it this way also gives it a little more room for uh, a little more surface area for the glue so that it has a better um, you know, connection and that it sticks better onto the surface that you're applying it to. Shouldn't be a problem. This is some rough wood here. Very old looking wood, very worn. So I'm just going to fluff it all apart to make this cute little bow. I'm going I'm to leave the tails nice and shaggy decide where we want to put the pieces. Now, if you want your tail shorter, you could cut them shorter. You can, whatever you want to do with it, depending on what kind of sign that you have. Here's the picks. And I'm going to secure them together with a little bit of jute, just tying them together in case you don't have floral wire, floral tape, or um, whatever to tie them together. You can see that this jute works just fine for these smaller plastic type pieces. So I think I want to put it right in the center here using a good bit of glue and then going to hold that down. Now these are plastic and there's no wire in this particular part of these picks so it's easy to kind of adjust them while the glue is still hot and they'll stay in place. So see what I mean there's a lot of room for glue on the back of there 
and it's going to stick down nicely to the jute that is on the greenery and onto the board. This sign uh, originally had a big pink flower in the middle of it. I think it was pink. Um, and a lady who was at Goodwill, um, one of my Goodwill friends, she, uh, she gave it to me. She had it in her pile of stuff and then she gave it to me. So then I'm going to take one little piece here and put it on the top just for a little extra a little green on the top there. You can put more but I don't want to overdo it. And this is the result of the first flip. What do you think about that? Having some problem with my um, tripod, my monopod, it's uh, sticking a little bit. So I got to work on something a little bit different. That's why my camera shots are a little bit jerky. So I do apologize for that. Flip number two. I'm going to take this pedestal. I'm not sure what originally was on it because I got it like this, like something was broken off. And then this little cake pan, they both came from, you guessed it, Goodwill. I'm going to take my Fix All Adhesive after I've wiped this down and I'm just going to add some around there. This is going to make it stick for a long time, ideally. Then I'm going to take my Gorilla Glue and put that in the spaces where I don't have the other glue because I really want this to last a long time. I've had in my head a long time that I wanted to do one of these. This is the first time. I know they've been around for ages. This is not anything new, but I've wanted this for a long time and I'm so pleased with it. I'm glad to be able to share it with you today because it's very easy. You could probably do this with a candlestick or something like that if you wanted to. If you had a new cake pan, you could always age it with some vinegar. So give it some time to dry. And when it's nice and secure, you can choose some ribbon. These all came from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just trying to make a decision on which one I want to use here. They're both very nice. They're both definitely farmhouse aesthetic. But this one really speaks to me. I love it, and because of the lace having a little more, um, I guess, flexibility, it goes around a curve better so that you don't have any puckers and it doesn't stand out. It's easier to curve with all those little holes in there. So I'm just gonna quickly work around this pan because again, metal and glue, hot glue, it dries really fast. You can see there that I didn't move it fast enough and it already had dried. So just try to work quickly, protect your fingers and keep it going there. and go all the way around. The little zigzag worked better than the single line. So that's what I switched to. And you're gonna go all the way around the edge right underneath that little lip. You could leave this off if you didn't want to add this. You could Your pedestal could just be without the ribbon if that's the way you like it. And now I want to bring some of that ribbon, the look of that ribbon down. So I'm adding about 14 inches of the ribbon here around the neck of this. You could do it up higher because there's a bunch of uh, on this spindle type candlestick or whatever this pedestal thing is. Um, it, there's a bunch of little curves so you could put it around whichever curve that you like. And I'm just going to trim it off so it's not hanging down on my surface. I'm not doing any dovetails on this. I'm just going to cut slants in it. And it's just a simple shoelace bow, um, very easy to do. A little dot of glue here and there will keep your ribbon staying down where you want it. If you wanted to add a little to the top, you could too. Flip number three. I am not really sure what this is, um, what it was originally, but I know exactly what I'm gonna do with it. It's gonna be storage in my craft room. So you gotta see what it turns out to be. So I'm gonna clean it up obviously wipe it down good and then I'm going to um, take my Rust-Oleum chalk paint this is a linen white and I'm just going to coat this entire thing down kind of sloppy kind of sloppy looking when you first put this on if you've never used chalk paint you really start thinking what have I done but be sure you get up all in the 
crooks and crannies and corners and just give it a good coat. I promise you it does get better. I'm going to cover this whole thing and then after it has dried, I usually sit mine in front of a fan that I have down in my craft room specifically for these uh, projects. Once it is dried, then you can go ahead and put your second coat on. You say just a good coverage. I actually even went down uh, with a dowel rod to get inside of the little holes there um, in the front of it and in the back so that it wouldn't have that that dark brown in there now i didn't completely coat the inside of it because no one is going to see that i did work on it but decided that i didn't want to spend my time doing that so now it is completely coated and see it looks much much better it's a flat look i'm going to take my sanding block from dollar tree and i'm just going to start hitting the edges where naturally paint would chip you know with wear so that's what i'm doing here i'm doing it lightly i'm I'm not doing anything crazy it doesn't look dirty or like I've just pulled it out of the attic or the garage but you know I like this you could always use a little bit of the um, Waverly antique wax and go over this instead or do it also whichever way you want to do it whatever your choice is but for my craft room in this area I want to leave it um, this brighter white with just a little bit of paint chip. So these also came from the Dollar Tree. It's a stencil with four little sayings on it and I'm just deciding which one I want and where I want to put it. Then I'm going to cut them into pieces because it's easier to manage. I'm going to take some of my tape and just tape it evenly as I can there down on that box top. And then I have some black chalkboard paint and a stencil brush that came from Goodwill. And I am just going to start pouncing that up and down. When you stencil, do not sweep it side to side. If you do that, then the paint will go underneath your stencil and it will be very messy and muddy looking. You want to go up and down, up and down, straight up and down. All right, and when I feel like I've got the coverage I want, you can do less or more depending on your own taste. I'm going to carefully take that tape off and put the stencil aside. Don't put it where you're gonna put your arm back in or your project back in it. That's not a good thing. Somehow or another, I bumped some paint on here, but let me show you, see this? I'm just using my sander as an eraser and it'll take that right off. Not a big problem. You get a lot of thick paint on there. Okay. So we're going to move on to a little bow for the top of it and I'm just using that other ribbon to make a little shoelace bow. Very simple. You can see what I'm doing. Sorry I'm down low in the frame but again tripod problems. And I am going to place it right up there over that hole. I've decided that maybe I would like to add a little bit of jute to that as well. So I'm make a little jute bow to go right on top. Same way, same thing. I am going to dovetail this ribbon on both sides. Really easy. Cutting upward and it makes that pretty little neat V. Very simple. I'm gonna trim up this jute bow place them on top. There they are layered on the top. Just want to cut it down a little bit more and say here is my jute roll. I'm going to drop it inside and feed that string right out that hole in the front. Perfect little storage piece so that you're not pulling your jute and the ball is falling down or tangling up on anything. It looks nice sitting on the side of your crafting table and it fits in great with the decor. And I think we always need a reminder to be kind, right? Simple, look at that. Yep, I think I like it. 
Okay, so here's you an overview of the three projects that we did. Here's the sign. This is the first one. The tray, and here it is loaded up with decor. That's the second one. And then the third one is the box. It's my little storage box. So which one was your favorite? And do you think that you'll be trying to recreate this with anything? You can certainly use this just as inspiration because we're not likely going to find the exact same pieces since they were thrifted, but you can use these ideas with things that you already have or things that you get at the thrift store, maybe even Dollar Tree. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.